men have gone down to the sea in ships for whale since the days of antiquity. But in this modern age, the hunt has become a science. These men, Norwegians, South Africans, and Scotsmen, are off on a seven-month voyage in the South Atlantic aboard a 500-ton, highly equipped catcher ship. Preparation takes up the men's time as they head for the whale feeding grounds. Seven-pound bags of TNT are loaded into grenades which screw onto the harpoon nose. They are triggered to explode deep inside the whale to kill the animal quickly and humanely. The captain of the craft is usually the harpoonist, and he spends every spare minute preparing the key piece of equipment aboard ship, the harpoon gun. Bags of gunpowder are loaded into the shells that fire the harpoon, a job that calls for steady nerves. Nearly a half a pound of powder goes into each shell, and the shell, in turn, is triggered by a cartridge. The barbs, spring-actuated, are lashed down so that they will lie flat until they penetrate a whale, and fly open, much like the ribs of an umbrella, holding the whale as a barbed hook holds a fish. The harpoon weighs 170 pounds and is effective at 40 yards. Now the ship lays about 100 miles off Africa's Cape of Good Hope, and anticipation runs high as they enter the whaling area. The ship has a thousand eyes. she blows! Sperm whale, the most valuable species. Now everything is efficient action as the helmsman maneuvers to put the harpoonist in position for a shot. This is the moment for team action with thousands of dollars at stake. But the whales sense danger and sound, finding safety in the deep. Lookout spots the surfacing whale. It's a miss. The harpoon bounced off the whale's back and into the water beyond. Now's the time for fast teamwork. As the spent harpoon is retrieved, another is quickly loaded. They must be ready when the whale surfaces again. There it is, just under the water. The gunner gets a bead on the giant mammal, following his every turn, patiently waiting for him to surface within range. A 60-ton prize. The internal explosion killed the whale, and he is lashed alongside of the ship while a mixture of steam and air is pumped into the carcass. Within two minutes, the whale will be inflated enough to float for days. An identifying flag is tied to the body. The position is radioed to a tender vessel that will tow it to a shore-based factory for processing. The men's spirits rise with the first catch, and the hunt continues. The vessel makes about 100 miles a day, and with a bit of luck will average two whales each day. With the men working on shares, the better the hunting, the better their take-home pay. Dolphins, a sailor's omen of good luck. The clowns of the deep, they'll follow a ship for days, unafraid for the sailors treat them all most as pets. Rough seas ahead, a biting northeast wind blows up giant waves, buffeting the ship as it plows on course. Her only object, whale. Even sailors hug the rail in a storm like this. Whale ahoy! 
away, dead ahead, and the chase is on. He breaks the water in a ring of white about a quarter of a mile off the bow. Here, the skill of the helmsman comes into full play. A bullseye! But the whale shakes off the effect of the hit and takes off on the end of the manila line that's let out to give him play. Now he's played like one would a trout, paying out the line, then slowing his run and taking off the slack. In 60 seconds, he takes out 2,000 feet of line. This monster is about 70 tons, 140,000 pounds fighting for his life. The line winds around a powered capstan, and the slack is taken up slowly as the whale tires. Sometimes, the battle can last for hours, even days, but it can only end in either capture or a parted line, for it's a fight to the finish. This hours-long battle is the result of a faulty shot, for a whale doesn't go far if he's properly hit with this deadly harpoon. He's winched closer and closer to the boat, and a second harpoon will complete the kill. It was a Herculean task that called for all the skill and patience of the crew. Here we can see how the first harpoon barely penetrated the dorsal fin. How it held without tearing out of the flesh is a mystery. Another catch to float and flag for the pickup vessel. Whalers today don't carry the air of romance that surrounded the days of Moby Dick, but despite technological advances, there's still a great demand for the fine oils found only in the whale. And whale steaks are a delicacy in many parts of the world. Then there's ambergris, used as a perfume base and worth 10 times its weight in gold. But more than that, there's the siren call of adventure that will always be answered by the men who go down to the sea in ships.